Okay, this is a three node etcd cluster running on Windows Server 2012 and then an additional Windows Server 2012 machine running etcd in proxy mode. etcd is a distributed key value store. It's part of the CoreOS project. The project offers a Windows build, so I decided to try and run it on Windows. It's a requirement of etcd that the nodes be able to find each other. You can use DNS or a static list of nodes, or you can use the discovery service provided by etcd, and that's what I'm using. So the first thing I did was go to a well-known URL to generate a discovery URL. In this case, I told it I wanted a three-node cluster, which is the default. And then I can browse to that URL and see that it has no nodes in it. etcd 2.0 does not use a configuration file. You have to pass in your configuration directives either through the command line or through environment variables. I prefer the command line because it's unambiguous when troubleshooting, but that's just a preference. So I'll take a look at the command line I'm going to be passing to that CD. The first option, name, specifies the node name in the cluster. It's easy just to use the computer name, so that's what I'm doing. Initial advertise peer URLs is the same as a static list of peers. Um, when the node first comes up, it's the only node in the cluster, so I default it to itself. Listen peer URLs is the IP and port that etcd should listen to for other cluster members. Listen client URLs is the port and IP that etcd listens to for applications requesting information from the store. The etcd control utility defaults to the loopback IP, so I specify that one as well as the machine's network address. Advertise client URLs is the IP and port that etcd will share with the cluster to be reached by other clients. The discovery URL is the token I generated for the, for the cluster discovery. In all these cases, Instead of using the IP address, I use the computer name variable. One of the nice things about Active Directory is that all of the machines automatically register themselves with DNS and automatically have the right DNS suffix configured. So computer name is pretty much always guaranteed to work. There's a chocolatey package for etcd, and the params passed to the package will be fed to the etcd service when it's configured. So I have to collapse all of these down to a single line. Everything you see on this line is the same that is in the, in the block above. Okay, so I'll just take the whole string and connect to the console of the first machine I want to install that CD on. That CD depends on NSSM, a service manager for Windows. Chocolatey automatically resolves the dependency and installs it. And Chocolatey says it did it. Um, the package doesn't automatically start the service. You get an opportunity to edit the service settings, if you like, by using NSSM edit. You can see the computer name variable expanded everywhere. Discovery token is what it should be. Yes. Okay, so I'll start the service. And it's running. And if I refresh the discovery URL, I can see the first node is registered. Now, etcd isn't going to work yet. I told it, it it's going to be in a three-node cluster, and it, it expects all three nodes before it's going to work. So I'll just connect to the other two machines and install etcd on those as well. And if I refresh the cluster now, there's all three nodes. One thing to point out first is that the Windows firewall needs to be configured to allow traffic on those ports. If you don't do this first, the cluster won't start correctly and you'll have to start over again. 
which you can see I opened up 2379 and 2380, which is the default for etcd 2.0. Okay, so now if the demo gods are smiling, I should be able to use etcd control to set a value. And then read it back on another node in the cluster. And there it is. etcd control is the management utility for etcd. There's already plenty of good documentation and demos for it running on Linux and it works the same way on Windows. I just wanted to run a member list and see all three nodes participating in the cluster. So that's running an etcd cluster and probably nobody other than me is going to run it on Windows. But the other thing you can do with etcd is run it in proxy mode. Now the benefit of proxy mode is that it runs on a machine, it uses discovery to find the cluster, but to applications running on the machine, they just connect to local host on a well-known port. This means your applications don't have to be aware of the cluster, they can count on the machine they're running on. If you notice me replacing the discovery URL, I had to pause the recording and go through it a second time. Apparently, if you don't start all the nodes soon enough, uh, the first one times out and then it decides it never wants to participate again. So I just did everything over again and started the service more promptly. So the only other thing I want to do differently with this is their documentation defaults it to 8080, but I think I'd rather use the standard client port, which is 2379. 2379. So let's use this instead. So I've not done this before, but we'll see if it works. I'm going to install. Actually, I'll just show you the cluster again first. There's three nodes registered with discovery. So I'm going to take this and install etcd on a fourth machine, this time in proxy mode. We'll see what we get. Apparently I don't have chocolatey on here. Okay, now I have chocolatey. Let's try this again. So on this machine, etcd won't participate in the cluster. It will never be elected a mem uh, it will never be elected master, and it won't participate in election. It's just here to simplify communication between applications running on this machine and the etcd cluster. It seems to be running. And there we have it. So etcd control is connecting to the loopback IP on port 2379, just like any other etcd control. But if I go and look at my cluster now, there's no fourth node. That's because this machine isn't participating in the cluster, but I can use the tooling the same way. So that's it. That's a three node etcd cluster running on Windows Server 2012 and an additional machine with etcd running in proxy mode. Probably what I'll do is add this command to my deployment template so that every machine in my environment knows how to find etcd.